Special thanks to our promotional partners at the American Philatelic Society. The APS is the largest stamp collecting organization in the world, supporting collectors of any level worldwide. For more information about membership and APS services, visit stamps.org. I'm Charles Epting from H.R. Harmer in New York City. And I'm Michael Cortese of Noble Spirit in Pittsfield, New Hampshire. And this is Conversations with Philatelists. Michael, we are back to our normal it's settings. Re- return to form. <laughs> we haven't done this in a while. Uh, the last couple of episodes have been in person. But yeah. with this episode, is special because we, since the last time we spoke and the last time we got together, have news about who bought the magenta. So I'm sure that everyone listening will know. Uh, mm-hmm. But just to recap very quickly, the magenta sold this past Tuesday, June 8th. Uh, it sold for eight. 0.307 million, I believe is the exact figure. Yep. 8.3 is the round number that is being thrown about. Uh, so about a million dollars less than last time, which I think some people found a little bit disappointing, let's say. Um, but but my mood was immediately, uh, I, I immediately rebounded <laughs> when I found out who bought the Magenta. Why don't you tell people yeah, so who spent <clears throat> $8.3 million? $8.3 million or... 5.9 million pounds. So Stanley Gibbons. Oh, there's and, a hint right there. <laughs> foreshadowing. Stanley Gibbons uh, of, of in the Strand in London, the famous Stanley Gibbons, bought the British Guiana one cent magenta. Uh, just, I, I think it came as a surprise but to absolutely everybody. It's one, it's one of those things that I think was very surprising when they when they broke the news. Yeah. Yeah. But in retrospect, it's like, wait a minute, this yeah, makes, makes perfect sense. sense. Like makes this sense. was inevitable in a way, yeah. um, even though nobody saw it coming, or at least I didn't hear anybody <laughs> talking about it. So it's that yeah. weird thing where, you know, hindsight is really 2020. Yeah. Like at the um, end of the sixth and, sense, and, you're like, I knew it. I knew this Which I haven't seen, but that's oh. okay. okay. Um, don't tell me. Uh, <laughs> just a chance I might watch it someday. Um, I, what I'm really excited about mm-hmm. is it's been, what, two days since the sale? Yes. And we're about to talk to Victoria Lager. Yeah. Who is yeah, well, the I've managing never director. Spoken to her before. I, I've met her at shows. She's the managing director of Philately at Stanley Gibbons. Mm-hmm. And she's going to talk to us about this decision to purchase the magenta. Again, yeah. we're like 48 hours out from the purchase. Yeah. And we're already going right to the top of Gibbons, mm-hmm. which is. Um, it's exciting. I've, it, it, it's I've not really only... been looking for. Go ahead. It's it's not only exciting because of what's happening, but because they 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 did the press release saying they bought it and this is their intention on it. But it was kind of a there's so many questions that everybody it has. Raised so we, more questions than it answered. And, exactly. and I'm sure there are things that are proprietary. I'm sure there are things that yeah. we can't know yet. But I'm I'm hoping that Victoria might be able to shed a little bit more light. Yeah. On I, you know there's sort of the the decision making that went into purchasing it. Yes. And then there's what comes next. Now that mm-hmm. they have it, what can we expect? They said it's going to be on display at their office on the Strand in London, which mm-hmm. if the stamp deserves to be anywhere, if it belongs right. anywhere, it's there. Uh, but I'm really curious. There's you know a lot of talk about you know uh, you and me and the, the common people owning a piece of the stamp. What does that mean in mm-hmm. today's NFT crazy world? Um, <laughs> we, w- what is in store for the Magenta? So I, I'm really uh, thankful and, and grateful that um, Victoria is uh, able and, and willing to speak to us today, and yeah. uh, th- this is one that I've I've really been um, excited about uh, this, again because of the because of the timeliness of it. You know, a lot of people mm-hmm. we talk to, uh, they're great interviews, and I look forward to them. But it doesn't matter if we talk to them one week versus the next. This yeah. one again, forty eight hours almost on the dot. Well, same day you emailed uh, Stanley Gibbons. Later that day, you and, get a response. The, fa- the and fact that the they were so re- yeah. receptive and uh, and and again willing to to join us, I think, is just yeah. amazing. And I I can't wait. So, what do you say we bring Victoria on and hopefully answer some questions and maybe raise some new ones? Absolutely, absolutely. Let's bring her in. Hey, Victoria. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Good. Good. How about yourself? Congratulations. And, and thank you for joining us, uh, you know, so soon after um, what's, what's surely yeah. one of the biggest days in, in Gibbons history. Yes, absolutely. I'm just trying to think what might top it, but I'm not, I'm not <laughs> sure that there is anything really. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, it's, yeah, it's a fantastic week for us. Fantastic day um, and hopefully a lot more fantastic things to come. Absolutely. So I, I, I'm sure what a lot of people are wondering, uh, and you know, as much as you can talk about this, but 
where did the idea come from? When did the idea come about? You know, the sale was announced a couple of months ago. Uh, is you know, sort of, what was the genesis of um, of of Stanley Gibbons' participation in the auction? Um, I think we had been keeping an eye on, um, you know, magenta aside, like you know, where is the hobby going, and what's it going to look like in the next five, 10 years, obviously COVID has um, accelerated some of those things we felt, this sort of digital online Zoom meetings, you know, you guys are classic example of, of, of how the hobby sort of changing and how everyone's embraced it. So it's sort of keeping half an eye on that anyway, obviously, uh, well, more than half an eye. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it wasn't immediate at all. I, I, I'd I need to look back at my emails because everyone's asked me this. That's the, actually when it, mm -hmm. I had my, when the team's chat started. I can't, yeah, I mean, I think maybe three three odd weeks before the sale. Um, really? it, it sort of organically, I suppose, came about, um, but quite, quite quickly. And then all of a sudden it was like, you know, bam. And then it's like, right, let's... Uh, Let's try and see if we can break the idea. And we spent three weeks trying to see uh, what the, you know, what the downsides or what the, you know, could it blow up? You know, anything, just trying to stress test it, I suppose. Right. And coming back to actually, it seems like a pretty good idea. So, um, but the, yeah, the, and then that was it really. And then obviously, um, you know, it was right up until sort of the last moment. We had a call on uh, Monday evening um, just to finalise things and just have a bit of a, I guess, a final group group chat. Um, so sort of furiously preparing my dinner for my evening call. Um, yeah, and that was that was it. It, it, it. That then it happened, and the day came and. Uh, yeah, the, you know, the hour before the auction was quite interesting. I was quite nervous, obviously. And uh, then it was all over in a couple of seconds. And then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and all of a sudden it was like, right, uh, oh, right, okay. And uh, right, well, we better crack on then. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a blur, I think, to mm -hmm. begin with. Um, so and then, obviously, you know, we had to announce it. So you didn't really get a second for it almost to sink in because... You know, we were trying to get all the statements ready. We'd had everything lined up, but things like, you know, the final amount and actually did we have to release it that evening and that, all of that, you know, it's sort of more, more company stuff that comes with being a, a listed entity. You know, we had to sort of tick a few boxes um, from that, that side of it. So, and then, you know, you get all the sort of customer emails and everything like that. So you didn't really get a, really a second, I don't think, before, you know, uh, us, having it sink in and, and uh, everyone knowing, so, yeah. So as far as the announcement goes, I, it filled it, us in with a lot of the intentions of Stanley Gibbons, but also kind of uh, led, led us to ask a little bit more questions. As far as you can, can you expand upon a little bit of the intentions on Stanley Gibbons? You talked about everybody owning a part of the stamp. What necessarily does that mean to you guys? Uh, we are still finalising everything, okay. um, so I, I wouldn't want to jump the gun and give right. you a bells and whistles uh, plan. Um, so we are we are still finalising the tech and the, the final offering. Um, but as as soon as we have that, we will obviously we will be able to to sort of talk about it. But from our point of view, it's uh, incredibly important that we get all of that absolutely spot on. Mm -hmm. So we've got something truly special, truly great to to share with with all the collectors and and anyone else who might uh, you know want a piece of it. So, and as much fun as that piece of the puzzle is, there's also the very old fashioned sort of tactile, tangible uh, part of you know putting the stamp on display it at your offices. Which I I was saying to Michael in the introduction, if there's one place on the planet where this stamp probably belongs it's it's the strand so um you know that, that must be exciting as well that, that must, I'm, I'm sure you guys are anticipating a uh, an uptick in uh physical visitors especially after you know the last year when it's been so tough for people to get together in person so i you know is, is that exciting for you to um you know it, do you expect yeah. to sort of become uh a, a tourist attraction 
<laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yeah, e everything else aside, just, just the fact that, you know, we can say that, you know, we own it, it's in our building, it's, it's here at 399 Strand is, um, well, yeah, it, it, it's a dream come true, I suppose, in, in some respects, it's excellent. You know, I, again, there's there's still a fair amount um, to work out in terms of, you know, where's it going to live? What's this house going to be like? We've got to sort all that that sort of stuff out. Um, you know, obviously we were so focused on, on making sure that everything else was lined up, you know, this all sort of had to come. So yeah, so there's there's lots of things we could do. You know, are we going to have a little room and how often are we going to display it? And how are we going to deal with like, you know, customers coming in wanting to see it and, and all of that. So um, we've got to do all of that, but that's sort of the, um, I guess the really nice bit because we're- You've put, you've put so much effort into the acquisition. Now you can worry about the fun stuff. Yeah, and almost like, it's not that, Obviously, I wasn't ignorant of all those facts, but you're sort of focused so solely on one thing and making sure that, you know, we got, we had all of the other things sort of right and in place, um, you know, from sort of an operational and like business point of view that um, you sort of, I guess you knew this was going to come, it just didn't need to come sort of before. So um, I've got a fairly long to-do list on, on the actually that, you know, physically accepting um, the stamp and, yeah, how we're gonna, how we're gonna sort of, yeah, sh showcase it. Um, so yeah, there'll be there'll be fun conversations to to have with the guys internally. I'm sure everyone's gonna have a, everyone will come up with a, a great idea. So hopefully we can sort of mishmash a few of them and uh, really put on quite a, a spectacle. I think. And another of those conversations that I'm sure I'm not sure if you guys have had them yet, but but the um, so much of the story of this stamp, especially this time around, has been regarding the signatures on the reverse. Has there been any sort of internal discussion about Gibbons adding their signature to the stamp or uh, is that something that's been kicked around amongst you guys at all? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, of course. I mean, even though I was focused over here, I mean, we did have a little bit of a conversation. Um, generally so yeah we, we haven't finally decided what it you know do you do a stamp or do you just do a no as in a stamp as in like a hand stamp you know um sg or or do we just just do a hat sort of handwritten initial but you know um i think sg on the back of the stamp would be um very appropriate uh probably an initial obviously certainly from my point of view that i think needs to be there so um yeah i, I I feel sure we will do it. It's just quite how how we'll do it. I think there's there's still a, some some finalisation to do on that front. So you say you've been keeping an eye on the direction that the hobby is taking, and this kind of finalised. You said, or the decision kind of came up three weeks before the sale. Here is this something that Gibbons had had in mind for a direction in the long term in just stamps in general or did it kind of make sense as soon as the sale was announced three weeks out it just clicked yeah not, not yeah not so much we you know we definitely have spent some time looking at sort of our own digital offering and you know whether that is our gsm um or we have my collection or just like a digital album so it's, it's those sort of concepts we've been sort of throwing around probably for the last year or so probably um so yeah that that was the sort of that's how we were thinking about it and how you know just you, you still want to physical collecting is is great right. so you, you know you can have a really nice physical album and, and and display them how you wish but actually why wouldn't you also want a digital version of that as well that you've got you know you can't put all your stamps in your pocket but you certainly can put them on a on a digital platform with um, that you can access from your phone, you know. So it's, it's those sorts of conversations we, we've been having um, before that, you know. I, I think everyone was, was amazed at Stuart's generosity with leaving the stamp on display uh, at the National Postal Museum for, for so long. Um, but, you know, I, I'm sure that to some visitors it maybe felt a bit incongruous to have this, this rarity of British Guiana at the you know, United States National Postal Museum, something like the inverted Jenny block makes a lot more sense in, in the U.S. museum, I would say. What does it mean uh, to Gibbons to be able to return this stamp to the United Kingdom and sort of 
repatriate the most famous of all stamps. Is that is that something you guys thought about while making the decision to purchase that this it, it, that it belongs in, in the UK? <laughs> I felt I think it was more about it belongs or you know it, it'd be nice for Gibbons to um, sort of it, it to be with us rather than hadn't really thought about it in terms of the UK. But I can't remember who I was speaking to the other day, you know, since the sale and, and, and they used the, you know, back home with Britain and I hadn't really truly considered it like that. Um, but yeah, no, I, 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 I suppose, yeah, it's, it, it's great. Yeah. They were, they were really like, yeah, it's great for Britain. Um, you know, yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah probably is. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, but thing. no, you know, coming back, coming back to us is, is the really exciting bit. And, um, if, uh, if great Britain is, uh, as a nation are happy, then then that's that's an added bonus, I suppose. Yeah, that's a conversation Charles and I had um, last week, I think, where six of the of the the previous six um, famous owners, three of them had been American. Like I think the last three had been American. So to see it kind of go back to uh, overseas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess it has been in the US for a, for a good while. Yeah. Uh, and I, I saw it at the Smithsonian, actually. Um, I think in 2018, I think I was there. I, COVID's messed up my years somewhat. But yeah, I think it was, it was around, around that time. It was nice to see. And I, and I loved what they did with the, uh, the display. Um, they've done a really good job. I mean, Smithsonian was great anyway. I mean, I was so impressed with, with what they've done there. Um, so yeah, they sort of quite high expectations that I need to try and uh, meet. You know, obviously we're not a museum, but you know they really did. Um, I think do the stamp stamp justice for sure. How how's it been received over there? I suppose you know you sort of men on the ground, so yeah. to speak. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think really I, I well. Think, I, I think the response has been really positive. I think, yeah. um, you know, the fact that it's staying within the hobby, I think there was some concern, obviously, with, with um, uh, you know, you sort of have this great contrast between what DuPont did with it, given the circumstances of the latter half of his life, and what Stewart did with it. And I think that um, there was a lot of concern that this stamp might be lost for generations again and might, you know, disappear into an album or into a um you know where it was inaccessible and and everything i've heard has been very positive that um the hobby kept its greatest treasure um and the fact that it'll be you know publicly visible i i, I everything i've heard has been um uh really very positive almost like a sigh of relief from the people that you know yes yeah. we didn't want to lose this thing again in a <laughs> <Yeah>. bank vault <laughs> i think before we uh, embarked on our path of you know are, are we gonna sort of put a bid in for it i i had assumed it would also go outside of philately actually that was my first my first thought so um well well we've, we've avoided avoided that one anyway so. yeah good. well like the like the jenny did you know i don't know the the buyer david um i forget his last name rubenstein rubenstein uh i don't know him as a philatelist himself but the the purchaser of the of the inverted Jenny block, which, you know, has a philanthropic past, but it kind of went outside of philately. Yeah, and the coin hasn't been announced, has it? I don't know. No, not yet. This is not a question I expect you to know the answer to off the top of your head, but I've been thinking, is has Stanley Gibbons now handled every stamp of the British Commonwealth, as far as you know? Is there anything in, in your, you know, well, uh, well over a century of history? right. I Cannot answer that. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious though if there's anything else. I, again, this seems like it would be the, the final uh, I can piece of the puzzle. Find out for you. I mean, it's Dr. Uh -huh. Kim's who, who will know that off the top of his head. Um, but it certainly. Uh, I'm just trying to think. I would, I would defer to a wiser person than myself on that mm -hmm. one. But I, I can certainly. Uh, let you know. I mean, it would be, there, there can't be many if, you know, if, if we yeah. have, I don't think. Um, it's a good question, actually. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> and we, we've spoken to, 
to George James once, and we introduced him at uh, Stampex for his talk on fakes and forgeries. Yes. How ex- in the in the Commonwealth Department, being in the Commonwealth Department, how excited was he to get this stamp? Once the once the hammer finally landed. He didn't know. <laughs> Uh, obviously, because we are listed, it, it is market sensitive information mm-hmm. and uh, short of bringing the whole company inside, right. um, it wasn't fair to, yeah. to put people in that position. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he, he I, I did um, I did pop it on in the auction room for everyone and uh, there were a few soft drinks on the side for people. Uh, to watch because you know regardless of whether we're bidding or not right it's right. it's still an occasion that as a stamp company, we were, my, we were michael texting, and i were yeah. texting each other watching on our computers yeah it was yeah. Uh, exactly yeah. like you're gonna watch it anyway right yeah. um yeah. i don't know if uh if a couple of people may have wondered at that point um but yeah i mean look, it's uh well, the most famous stamp in the world who's not excited about yeah. <laughs> about going to work and walking past it, you know, if they choose to, sort of thing. I mean, mm-hmm. so uh, as- you know, NLP, the Commonwealth Department and the Commonwealth Market, you know, it's it's such a part of Gibbons, um, yeah. you know, the part one and and, and, and everything that's that we've done in, in in our history. You know, it's we're it's all intertwined. So, so as far as um, transportation goes, with restrictions on traveling and everything like that how difficult is that going to make it because i assume they they can't ship it i'm um, not gonna fedex it to your stuff. yeah Royal <laughs> not gonna FedEx. so someone's gotta from sotheby's i would imagine have to deliver it or stanley gibbons go over there how how difficult does that look with all these covid restrictions um at the moment we haven't finalized that yeah um we are in discussion about having it shipped actually um oh. i mean i given sotheby's uh yeah you, you know, technically the stamp's much easier than a Picasso or anything else <laughs> of that sort of size. I mean, yeah. it's a, it's, it's a small piece. Um, so we're, we're at the moment sort of focusing on the insurance aspect of it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we're not sort of chomping at the bit to get it here next week sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Quite a lot to, to prepare. I mean, it would have been, it would have been great if uh, Graham and myself could have gone over and, 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 and bid in person, obviously. Yeah. Um, although that might have sent the nerves like <laughs> above and beyond. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously we couldn't do that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're still, we're still, I, I, I'm more concerned about getting the security in place and yeah. um, having a setup here that's ready to receive, you know, receive everything. So um, we'll, we'll continue those discussions with uh, if we have to go and fetch it, then uh, then we will. Um, yeah, fairly nerve-wracking trip, I suppose. You wouldn't want to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Eat, drink, do anything. You're just going to stare at the stamp for the yeah. entire exactly. life. <laughs> Uh, do you remember personally your first uh, encounter with the Magenta? Do you remember first learning about it? Um, uh, you know, wh- you know, my- Michael and I came into the hobby very different ways. And, and in America, you know, I, I, it's, um, you know, we learned about the inverted Jenny. We learned about certain, you know, the Alexandria blue boy, but do, do you recall when you, uh, or, or, you know, do you have an early memory of, of being aware of this stamp? That's another good question. Um, <clears throat> not that I can recall, obviously I've, I've sort of grown up in stamps. So it's not like at some point I got sat down and, was sort of given a stamp lesson. Um, it's just always been a part of your... I think, yeah, I think it has always just been. A, so it, quite when it was, but, you know, I, I guess from quite an early age, I always knew what the sort of, you know, the really famous stamps were, I, su- I suppose. Um, and uh, before I got into stamps full time, I, I, I had a different a different career. And um, when I left that, actually one of my leaving presents, because they knew I was, you know, going into the sort of stamp world, um, was a book on the post office Mauritius. But they just picked that, I think, from a, a quick Google, you know, what do you get someone who's into stamps sort of thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but yeah, no, I, so I don't know specifically when I first sort of clocked it or became aware of it. Um, no. I'll have a think about that one as well. And, and, and sort of similar to the um, the the signing the back of the stamp, I assume this is way too uh, premature a conversation to have had. But do you see this stamp ever going on the road, or is it is it going to be um, uh, you know glued to to the strand, or could it make an appearance at a, an international show? At I mean, you've got the big international show coming up in less than a year now. Um, do you see this perhaps making appearances elsewhere? You speak to to Gordon. He wants me to bring it to Westpac next month. Yeah. So. Uh... <laughs> I think if he had his way, <laughs> um, no, I, we are still, um, yeah, getting the specific sorted out with the insurance company, but m my intention would be if we can, then we should, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to wheel it out at every stamp show, obviously. Um, but yeah, some of the big ones and that sort of stuff. Absolutely. I, I feel like, uh, you know, it absolutely should, you know, logistics, you know, sort of, uh, depending, um, if, if we're going to a show internationally, I've got a lot of stock with me anyway, I'll, you know, traveling Just throw with... it in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just love it on top of the box, you know, with all the other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, but ideally, yes, I would like it to get a nice, um, international presence if, if possible. I think that's part of the, the relief that people feel about it going to Stanley Gibbons is that, it, you know, it, the donation to the or the being on loan to the Smithsonian National Postal Museum, you had to go there. But to, to bring it with you to different shows gives it a much wider audience. It gives yeah. it more of a, I don't want to use the word appeal, but because it's got such tremendous appeal already, but it, it gives it more of a yeah international recognition larger and, than the sense and that it already this, has. And there's this yeah. weird thing with unique stamps that I've noticed where if they're not on the market and if they're not exhibited for a long time, they sort yeah. of get forgotten. You look at what, you know, you look at the famous Life magazine from the 1950s. What was mm. famous in the 50s isn't necessarily what's still famous today. A lot of these things have been forgotten because of their um, lack of visibility. And and yeah, I, I agree, Michael, that, that again, knowing that it'll be at Gibbons, um, you know, we're we're sort of assured that it'll continue to to live on in the hobby, which I think yeah. is exciting. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you know, it it won't always be like permanently on display at Gibbons, um, but it will always be in our vault. And um, at least we'll know where it is. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, if people are coming and they they want to, oh, we haven't quite worked out, but technically, you know, book an appointment and you can you know you can have a look at it. it you know, it is going to be accessible, and that's how we. How we'd like it to be i mean you know you don't want to overexpose it obviously mm -hmm. um but you you know you do want to make sure that everyone knows that it's here and it's safe and you can see it and uh, you know it's a well, it's, it's a wonderful treasure and it, it you know pe people should be able to come and come and enjoy it yeah and so, then my last quote oh michael go ahead well so you you said that you the finalization of of all the ideas behind it weren't entirely completed yet. Do you have any idea of a timeline on what another press release on what the intentions are further than what was already announced is, or is it kind of just not at the moment? You know, we are yeah. really focused on um, you know making sure that what we've what we've sorted out is, is right and right for yeah. the customers, right for the collectors, right for the hobby. So, um, you know, we're not going to sit back for three months and put our feet up by yeah. at all. all that. <laughs> just us and, that's not me. That's not great. That's just not what we do. But, um, you know, so it, you know, we are sort of cracking onto it, uh, so to speak, but not, um, we don't have any, we haven't set any dates at the moment. Everything yeah. is, is still, sort of so new and at the moment we're both sort of just still you know Pinching talking yourself. to people um <laughs> you know talking to the press that sort of stuff so um i i think we sort of both figured that would be this week yeah and then um next week we put sort of start maybe putting some some timelines together and and notwithstanding the fact that we both have obviously day jobs <laughs> to do as well i mean <laughs> You know, we've still, we've still got a stamp business to run and, um, 
you know, George has still got, you know, inventory to buy and market, mm-hmm. and, you know, same for the GB guys and, you know, and, and, and all the other plans that we have as a company anyway, you know, it was very important to me that, um, you know, that they are still a focus for us because we've, we've worked really hard in the last three years to really try and um, bring Gibbons back to where it needs to be in the market. And obviously I, I would never want that jeopardized in any way. So, um, you know, it's, it's still business as usual, as exciting and as shiny mm-hmm. and everything about, you know, this week has been, you know, we, we still do have lots of other uh, things and plans and, uh, yeah, there's, there's also that going on as well. My last question is, you know, the response is, has seemingly been very positive so far, you know, assuming people are receptive to, you know, whatever it is you roll out next. And again, Michael and I are, are very anxious for the next steps. Is this something you could see Gibbons replicating in the future if the Bordeaux cover or, or another iconic item of, of Commonwealth flatly came up? Um, do you think this might be something you try again or, or was it, you know, the magenta is the most valuable, most famous stamp and this was a, you know, a, a one shot thing? Um I think at the moment that, that there's sort of a several avenues we could go down and and almost it, that was sort of an intentional move. So because we had such a short space of time to make a decision, we knew we'd never get everything in place. But actually, if A, B, C, D, whatever, however many options there were, they are still very much all open to us. So if, if we find a little bit further down that actually uh, it's got to be this way, there's almost like a journey for the, for that option if you if you get what I mean. So yeah, a, a absolutely, it's a possibility. It's just until we sort of truly get going with it, we won't quite know in which direction it's going to head. But we sort of sketched all, all the possibilities we think are there. Um, but you never know. I mean, as I say, it's such a short period of time. There could be a whole bunch of other things we just haven't, you know, haven't thought about that that could be options. But yeah, yeah, we have talked about that. Yeah. My final question would be, uh, are new business cards being printed? I know in America, a lot of the times, some of the larger stamp companies or uh, Mystic had the, had the uh, one cent Z-Grill on their business card and then the inverted Jenny plate block on their business card. And Charles's business card is fantastic with, <laughs> with, the, with the blue boy on it. Um, are there ideas to print new business cards with the magenta on it for everyone at San Lee Gibbons? That has not been a conversation. <laughs> um, I can add it to the list. Um, <laughs> no, we haven't actually. Yeah. I mean, uh, more broadly, uh, I guess the, the sort of general marketing and, and especially print marketing, we do have to yeah. have a conversation about. Um, but again, uh, we we haven't we haven't had that yet. But I mean, there will there will be things we will we will do. Um, I'll, I'll float the business card idea to the marketing team. Um, so uh, yeah, but no, there's nothing, nothing yet. We'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. But there 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 will be some there will be some branding at some point. I'm sure mm-hmm. in some way. Yeah. Um, I I, mean, I have actually put it up in the shop window actually yesterday. We've got a printer down the road, so you know there's a few small bits, but the sort of longer term stuff. Mm-hmm. that will come in the sort of in the coming weeks given that a lot of people were in the dark about it there was only so much sort of uh planning we could we could do yeah yeah so for for people we'll put the links in the description obviously but for people who want to learn more and and stay up to date on on you know further announcements uh, the website is uh it's one cent hyphen magenta.com i can I'll, I'll send you it all um and it's, it is a very basic page just says, you know, you can sign you up. Can, uh, my, Michael and I have both signed up for, uh, yeah. for the announcements. We're going to be keeping an eye on it, and I'm sure that a lot of people listening will uh, will do the same. Yeah, the, 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 the sign-ups have, uh, have been really positive. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, definitely a, a bigger number than I would have imagined, I suppose. Yeah, well, I think uh, everybody's really uh, conservative by nature, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's all there, and basically when there's, there's more news, it – that that's that's how we're going to communicate with people. I mean, of course, we'll also replicate that on our on our mm-hmm. main um, website as well, uh, and email. You know, we'll 
it, it, we won't keep it a secret once we've announced it. Uh, don't worry. Um, <laughs> Well, th this has been fantastic. I know it's a busy week for, for you guys, so thank you so much. I do much have for... a bit of time if you have anything else. Equally, um, when there is, I appreciate that there's some things I've just not been able to tell you. Um, yeah. So we can absolutely have another conversation, perhaps when there, when there is a bit more, because I'm sure you guys really absolutely. want to get into the detail, and I'm, I'm just sorry I can't. No, no, no. This has been this, incredible. Again, thank I, you. I, this week, I think everyone's just clamoring for anything at all. Um, you know, again, you were very quick. I was very impressed. <laughs> well, I, again, personally, I was I was relieved and excited when I saw. I, I was saying mm -hmm. to Michael in the introduction too. It's one of those things. Hindsight really is twenty twenty because I hadn't. You know, there'd been rumors: is the royal family going to bid? Is, you know, who's going to step up to the plate? Um, and in retrospect, it seems so inevitable and obvious that. Gibbons would uh, be an interested party, but I hadn't even considered it beforehand. It, 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 but, it, you know, again, looking back, um, there's really nowhere else it could have or should have ended up. Good. I, I, I'd say we've been overwhelmed with the support and um, just, yeah, it's, everyone's just been super happy about it. It's, and not just, you know, the guys here and everything, because, you know, that was a shock to them as well. But, <laughs> but yeah, the emails and calls and everything, everyone's been really supportive and it's, it's 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 been great i've really enjoyed it it was, a, yeah, it was a a bold brave move so it, i you know i was always a little bit bit nervous but i'm i'm pleased it's it's gone down so well no it's again it sort of reminds me of the uh the Irvin Weinberg, uh, you know, the, the, the ring of investors and everything. It seems like the stamp has a lot of great, and even Hind allegedly outbidding George V. It seems like every time the stamp changes hands, there's a great, bold strategy behind it. Hmm. Um, so I, I think it, you know, this certainly fits into a long line of, um, uh, again, you know, the, the stamp is pl plenty of unique stamps, even plenty of unique Commonwealth stamps. But this one, there's just so, the stakes are so much higher, it feels. There's so much um so much more going on every time it it trades hands and um again the fact that that the most important prominent prominent name in british stamps is behind it this time i think is um again just another great rung in yeah, the and it'd be great. it's it's you know it's such a story in its own right and if, if we can add to the rich history of it then yeah that's that's even better you know so yeah yeah no it's uh Exciting times ahead, and obviously, yeah, we can absolutely have another chat when. Um... I, I think I think that'd be great as soon as <laughs> yeah. something's laid, and then and then eventually down the line, whenever Michael and I are um, back in London, we'd love to, um, you know, come by the by the uh, by the Strand and and. Do you plan to come to the, the international? Or... Yeah, um, yeah, I, I yeah. Michael, are you? Hmm. Are, are you planning on going, Michael? I assume to so. Stampex. No, to London 2020, uh, 2022. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. We'll be well. We will, um, we'll be able to see each other then. And yeah. Are you, are you planning on coming over? Uh, West Pex. Yeah. Is still my intention. However, um, yeah. it's looking very unlikely. I mean, we still can't oh, no. really. It's, it's if they open it up last minute George and I uh, will go we're, we're pretty much all set up by the flights so it is just a case of sort of waiting to see but I love West Pex. it's a great show um, despite the distance it's actually quite an easy show logistically for us because it's so close to the airport and mm -hmm. everything's in one place and you, you really can sort of get in and get out with, with a sort of minimal fuss um, but I yeah, I don't know. I mean, it'll be the first stamp show. I think everyone, I don't know how about you guys, but we're all, well, a big part of the, the, the business is stamp shows. And yeah, I I, you know, I really miss it. Um, I miss the, the contact. We have a shop and we, you know, people are starting to come back, but it's nowhere near the same as when you go to a stamp show and there's, there's not just customers, but there's, you know, dealers and, you know, the, the stamp banter that, that happens. So. Yeah. yeah, we're both really looking forward to Westpex. Both of us will be there. Uh, oh, really? Charles is a booth. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed, uh, George yeah. and I will be there. Um, although, 
not with the stamp. Don't the fact that there was even any speculation about that on the Fragola board, I thought was kind of crazy that you guys would be dragging it to San Francisco. Um, oh, you know what? You don't know if you don't get. I can't knock him for his. Uh, no, the know. enthusiasm was. was the enthusiasm. Well but but again, the second you start to think about that idea logically, I uh, yeah. I didn't want to burst anyone's bubble. <laughs> uh no it's 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 far too uh far too soon i think just uh if we could just get them just just as us would be enough at the moment um so it's a shame that it's not a bit closer to the there's a show in chicago um but we can't write just by staying in the states for, mm -hmm. for quite that long um yeah. but uh so uh, yeah hopefully next year sort of full full show schedule and there's a lot of shows going on and we're definitely planning on attending as many as we can. You know. And yeah, my, again, Michael and I are, are excited to get back to London as soon as possible. Yeah. So yeah, we, yeah, we'd love to, again, we, we, let, let's make this a, a sort of running thing, if you don't mind, but, you know, once there's another announcement, yeah. we can follow oh, that up. Know, and then, yeah, well, yeah I was going to say, whenever, whenever there's news regarding this stamp, um, I don't think people will ever tire of <laughs> hearing about the magenta. So we, we would love we would love to make this an open discourse to keep people in the loop. Yeah, that that sounds like a really good plan. So I'm very happy to keep you in the loop, and we'll, we'll set something up, and sort of we we can get the timings as well with the the announcements as well if you want. That's fine. That would be perfect. Be and, and again, when it, it, whether it's in San Francisco or in London or wherever, Michael and I can't wait to congratulate you guys in yeah. person. Thanks. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be great. It'd be great to see you all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, thanks, guys. Really. Okay, anything we can do. We're all big fans. Um, <laughs> Thanks. So, uh, I know it, it, it's it's mutual. We loved having yeah. uh, George on. Love talking to you. Let, like, we, you know, any, anything we can do moving forward. Let's. Um, yeah. We'll send you a link. This is going to go up Monday. Yeah. So as soon as this goes up, we'll send you a link. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Really nice talking to you. You too. you too. Thank you so much. Congratulations yeah. again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye. Michael. I uh, am so thankful that, yeah. again, I, we, I, it, it has felt like such, I don't even know what to say. It has <laughs> felt like such a long week for us. Yeah. And yeah. we were just spectators. I know. <laughs> um, I can only imagine what has been going on internally at Gibbons with, with Victoria and her colleagues. So the fact that, uh, again, two days after she bought the stamp or they bought the stamp, yeah. <laughs> um, she was willing to come on and talk to us is is just so incredible to me. Yeah. And uh, a huge thank you to everyone at Gibbons. Huge congratulations yeah. to everyone at Gibbons. Um, this is this is remarkable. This is yeah. um, it's huge. It's it's huge news, and I love the fact that they're already in talks to take it to as many shows as they can. Um, without I, I think relief it, but... is the biggest emotion. Yes. You, yeah. I think you used that word. That is the yeah. biggest emotion I have felt, and I think a lot of people have felt. We're so spoiled by Stewart's generosity <laughs> with the stamp. Like yeah. Stuart was was an incredible uh, uh, steward of the stamp. He, for him, it was in a bank vault. Yeah, because but the it, owner it, it, was in prison for murder. Right. So it hadn't been seen publicly in in decades. like since the, yeah, nineteen eighties, eighties or nineties. So and 90s, again, yeah. again, you it's almost a, a blessing and a curse to have Stuart own it. Yeah. Because we're 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 sort of like numb to the stamp now. It's like yeah. all right, it's it's at this. It, I've lived in New York for two years. <laughs> I've never been to the Statue of Liberty mm -hmm. because it's right there. You can always go to it. Yeah. For the last seven years, the magenta has been at the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. And I've gone to the National Postal Museum and not even looked at the magenta <laughs> because it's there. It, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why, why do you have to you see it? To, you know yeah. that it's right there. Ex <laughs> exactly. I don't need to check in on it. And I feel like personally, <laughs> at least, I've become so jaded. And then... Stuart announces that he's selling it, and it's like, wait a minute. Yeah. You're going to take this away from us? You're going to um, <laughs> you can say all this now that it's sold. Yeah. But I was yeah. like, what do you mean you're selling it? Like, you can't do that. Like, this is <laughs> this belongs to all of us now. Right. So I think there was a lot of concern that it would vanish again mm -hmm. like it like it had. You know, there's almost a generation of philatelists who this wasn't accessible to. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. Gibbons announces that they have it and it's going on display at the Strand and Victoria tells us that it'll go on the road from time to time, insurance depending. Yeah. And uh, and it's like, all right, 
all is well yeah. in the world. Well, like, I mean, we, there we was can even go back to not worrying. About yeah, it. in our visit, there was even talk by Robert Scott himself about not knowing whether the stamp would be institutionalized or he. Yeah. Even Sotheby's, there was this massive question over where the stamp would go, and we were so nervous because he because he was showing it to us, and you know, he said this this might be the last time. You know, get a get a good look because we don't know what's going to happen to it. Again, we can all breathe a sigh of relief. Gibbons yeah. are um, uh, just, I can't tip my hat enough to them. Yeah. A move like this that is simultaneously such a huge benefit to Gibbons as a company, from a marketing but, standpoint, this is brilliant. But also to and the then in, to, to the public at large, this yeah. is as good as it gets. This is yeah. really a win win. Gibbons owns the most famous stamp in the world, mm -hmm. and we, the collecting public, can enjoy it uh you know as long as they as long as they own it so yeah uh, again best case scenario to yeah. everyone yes. um l can't wait to talk to victoria again once yeah. uh once more has been announced let's follow up with her yeah. um but more than anything just a, a huge thank you yes. to to uh victoria to um graham at stanley gibbons who uh was my original point of contact with this mm -hmm. with my email um they're they're really uh, doing right by by the hobby and by collectors, and um, I just want to commend them and and congratulate them and thank yeah. them, and hopefully see them at Westpex. Hopefully, either at Westpex or uh, or in London one of these days. Yeah, um, Michael. Before we wrap things up, this episode is airing on Monday, the fourteenth of yes. June. Yes. Uh, do we want to mention uh, what we have in the works for the latter part of the week? Do we want to? Uh, we haven't even really fleshed out this idea we yet. Haven't. Yeah. We uh, we only just came up with it in the last like twelve hours. I feel, <laughs> um, but but I, I I think it's fair to say that um uh, in the latter half of the week, um, you and I are going to try out a YouTube live stream where yes. uh, you and I weekly uh, in addition this is not interfering with our right. our you know traditional format, but but weekly you and I plan on hopping on YouTube live for about half an hour to discuss the week's news to discuss. Um, what's going on? What has sold at auction? What is coming up at auction? What new stamps were issued? What talk is the collectors club presenting? What APS stamp chats are going on? Um, I, I think this last last two days, I uh, know <laughs> the last week of all the magenta news has sort of inspired us, and, and you know we mm -hmm. want to um, help people keep their finger on the pulse of the hobby, and yeah. uh, I, I think this is certainly a, a direction we want to be going again. I love the format of conversations with Vladis. Mm -hmm. I love seeing the three boxes, you, me, and our guest, you, me, and Victoria in the case of today. Uh, I don't think we will ever veer away from that, but I think right. we can supplement that. And I think that, um, you know, you and me doing a little half hour news live stream every week would be a yeah. lot of fun. So um, by the yeah, time well, this video- Because we have this, the, we have these conversations in person and we might as well just share them. We talk you, about you, how excited every, we are every, about Every the... day you and I, geek out on the phone about what something sold for yeah you know, what as did you soon see as the eBay? Siegel rarities catalog came in you know I did, hey, did you read you the introduction read? yeah exactly and i think that um you know you and i uh certainly love would love to share that with people and yeah. i think that people might have questions so by the time this video is posted on the 14th yes. uh, we'll have a link in the or more information in the description yeah. about what we're doing or you can follow us on twitter we'll be tweeting about this in the little week leading up to it so yeah. uh, michael j court and charles l epting um, on Twitter, but but um, I think this will be fun um, yeah. for, for again for you and me just to bounce things off of each other. What did you see that's interesting? What did you see that uh, you want to share with people? What can we expect in the upcoming week? Yeah. And uh, I, I think this will be a fun again, not replacing conversations with philatelists, but right. merely adding to um, you know the the amount of fun we're already having. Yeah, yeah, not not replacing and and I love this format that you said the three boxes, but we've got a lot of other things in store. We you know we've, we've mentioned West more... Pex. 10 We've times got so I much to talk about and and yeah. regarding west i've been yeah, exactly. in touch with gordon eubanks yeah uh we're going to be talking to uh a couple of people um from the show board uh before the show and then mm -hmm. you and i will be in san francisco uh doing a lot of fun stuff on the ground yeah. there so yeah I, I think that having this loose half hour live stream no production value no editing no nothing just you and me unfiltered talking about the hobby <laughs> unfiltered <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, we're going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be real hard hitting, um, uh, controversial. No, it'll, again, it, but it, but it will, it will lack the, um, uh, you know, I, I think having a, a looser, exactly. Yeah. Having a looser, unrestricted, um, discourse about the hobby will be a lot of fun. So yeah. you and I will kick that off, um, Friday. probably this coming Friday. 
um, which will be the 18th. Yeah. The following Friday, is uh, is that your sale? Or we have is a it... sale the following Friday. I think we should try and squeeze a news half hour in before the sale. You're gonna try. We're gonna try and do that. I'll be on. I'll be in vacation on Maine, so you'll be able to see the lake behind me. Will you be able to do it from vacation? Um, most likely, if I have service. I had service last time. A little bit of part, a little bit of service. I'm gonna. We'll I'm gonna it. bring my laptop. Throw we'll in the do AirPods. It. We'll do it. Um, I think this will be a lot of fun. So look in the comments or look in the description, look at our Twitter feeds for, for more information. But um, anyways, that about wraps things up yeah. uh, again, Victoria, Stanley Gibbons, uh, Thank you so George, much. James, uh, Graham, everyone at Gibbons. Yeah. Yeah. Did yourselves. Congratulations. Um, I can't wait to see what's next. I can't wait to see what's in store. So um, Michael, I'll yeah. talk to you real soon. I'll talk to you next time. All right. Sounds Bye. good.